Hello, Web3 TV friends. Today, I'm at the Ripple Summit event in Dubai. I'm Ronella Hernandez, and I'm sitting here with Dr. Marwan from the Dubai Blockchain Center. How are you? Uh, I'm great. Thank you for having me. So what do you think about this event so far? How's it going? I know you attend so many events every day. So how is this one going for you? I think it's an amazing event. I see a lot of familiar faces here, but what surprised me the most is a lot of the internationals coming for, for this event. I think Ripple has an amazing ecosystem worldwide and uh, it takes it uh, uh, very seriously that Dubai is actually now at the, at the center of everything that Ripple is doing as well, uh, whether it is locally, regionally, or even internationally. And Ripple Swell being in the UAE is a great testament to that. Yes, great turnout today for sure. Yesterday and today, it's day two. So tell me a little bit more about your thoughts on Ripple. You said that they're doing a great job in the Middle East. Um, any more details there that you can share with us about how their, their efforts are? I think the re, uh, community outreach uh, is amazing for Ripple here in the region. Uh, we were one of the first region that were very positive on Ripple. Uh, the IFC was the first home of Ripple in, in the region as well. And Dubai at the core of that, all of that. And uh, having institutional you know, tie-ins with Ripple very early on in the start of Ripple, with all the stuff that happened uh, throughout, you know, the crypto winters and other things did not stop adoption here when it comes to actual rails, actual connectivity, actual settlement using uh, the Ripple network. I think the, the overall uh, vibe about Ripple in the U.S. has always been positive. Yes, definitely. All right. Now, I want to ask you a, a few more personal questions. How did you find out about blockchain technology in the first place is there like a memory or a moment that you can recall that you that when you learned about this technology i, I saw the paper in uh, 2011 actually and i said well i don't know if that's gonna work and then 2012 i found out uh, uh, through a, an actual use case that somebody's actually using it it was at uh, illicit activities but somebody was using it so i was like wow this actually works and then i jumped into the forum and it was like a, a I dive into the rabbit hole, sort of speak, and then I got into mining and then the rest was history. Okay, so you are a veteran in the space. Can you comment on maybe how it's progressed, how it's evolved as an industry, as a community in the past decade? Um, has it gotten better, the crypto industry? Has it gotten worse? What do you think? I think the, the, the thing that differentiates cryptocurrency uh, and normal communities and normal developers and normal ecosystems is community first. And this is at the core of everything we do. I think Dubai also is very community based, very kind of user experience based as well. And crypto is no different. And crypto found a home very quickly in Dubai because not only the community loves crypto, but the, the leadership here in the UAE, UAE love innovation. The regulators are designed to listen to the companies. They're designed and, and uh, really the governance here is uh, uh, run as a company rather than an oversight. You know, and it's this all of this kind of stuff contributes to the story of Dubai and contributes to the success of companies like Ripple and the UAE. That's so true. The country is run like a company in a way. So tell me a little bit more about your company, the Dubai Blockchain Center, what its mission is and, and how it helps the community grow in the region. So we, we as a Dubai Blockchain Center, we focus on community building, number one, ecosystem building, number two, education and awareness whether for institutions or public sector or even the community, the public sector, the public, I mean, the general public, we provide training classes, we provide events, meetups, hackathons to get, you know, to roll up your sleeves and get really uh, busy with the technology, open a wallet, open a hardware wallet, understand how not to invest in crypto, but also how to protect yourself from crypto scams, from losing your money, losing your, your seed phrase, for example, to your wallet. But we also do a lot of events. So we partner with a lot of events to make them understand the, the region, understand uh, the licensing that is done here, as well as how to run the successful event and how to really invite and attract the community to, to make it a success. Okay, and back to the education part that you were talking about. What, what are your, what do you hear from the community that are like the most challenging parts about getting into the industry? And maybe what are the aspects that they, are most curious about and want to learn more about? I think it's, uh, this is the, one of the, uh, the problems that we have with, with crypto in general, is uh, the stigma that is around it from people who have, who have never tried it before. So that it's not really a good kind of investment, it's like fluctuating. Uh, 
or the volatility and the price is not going to be used in the real world, all this other stuff that people who are outsiders judging without even trying it. But as soon as people take that leap of faith and download their first wallet applications or invest in their first asset, that completely changes almost instantly. I've seen a lot of people who jump into the crypto, sta uh, crypto space in the crypto winter that are extremely happy and really intrigued by how this is done, how decentralized it is, how autonomous it is. They can run everything without the central, you know, trusted third party. And it's a mind blowing for them. For us, it's an everyday life for the past 10 years. All right. And so looking to the future, um, what is your prognosis or predictions maybe for the next few months, next rest of the quarter when it comes to the market and the industry? Anything you're looking forward to? Any projects that you're looking forward to? I think the energy here is amazing. AI is going to play a huge role within crypto. So we're not, uh, uh, you know, the, uh, sitting on the side when it comes to AI. I launched my own project as a co-founder. It's called Evai. Uh, Evai is a crypto trading platform using AI only, no human judgment, no human interaction. So there's no emotional, uh, you know, emo or emotions attached to every trade. You basically get pure AI analysis. Uh, so that's capitalizing on both AI and cryptocurrencies. That's one of the use case uh, for using AI for blockchain, but there's hundreds of other, maybe thousands. Uh, your imagination is the limit for what kind of projects you can use with AI and blockchain. Definitely. All right. I'm going to look into that platform. Well, thank you so much for your time today, Dr. Marwan. Pleasure. Thank you for having me.